Good morning, folks. This is our magnetic field weakening over the last 400 years. It's something human global warming scientists don't talk about. That'll be a theme today. They're likely to show you things like this, the rise in global temperature, the rising CO2 recently, rising sea level. Why are they missing CO2 data? Good questions, observers. Scott from Hyper Report shared this with me. Very simply, this is a chart showing global temperatures at the gray line. The current low temperature cycle is the largest of the last three, and we have been near the bottom recently. That Precambrian low to the left appears to be major. 2011 was one of the cooler years of the decade actually, but still a good metric at 57.9 degrees Fahrenheit or 15.1 degrees C. We'll give them the benefit of the doubt and call it 16, putting us somewhere in here, aka just about normal. Here is that same line in purple with the red line showing atmospheric CO2. Ah, uh, no wonder they've omitted past data. Not what you expected. Any good non-shilling scientist who isn't bought and paid for will tell you that water vapor and methane are far, far more significant in terms of greenhouse gas effect. It is what it is. At the bottom, they suggest a solar connection on which I am 50-50, but they conclude that deflection efforts should be made and are careful to suggest things like whiteout surface reflection rather than atmospheric aerosols, aka chemtrails. Back here, and I replace the CO2 metric in the middle with the solar energy output, which does indeed go up slightly, but I do not think that it is what is driving our current climate change. Coming back to where we began, our weakening magnetic field. Now, complete reversals occur at a fairly non-linear average of about 300,000 years. Our last was 780,000 years ago. They weren't willing to suggest we were overdue until about October 2012, when Reuters and about a dozen others ran the NASA release to capture some 2012 hype. Now, the real gem of this article is above. The true causation of our changing world, in my opinion. Simply put, in 73 years, the magnetic north made a slightly larger than normal jump, and it is supposed to move. But then, 68 years later, it had traversed quite a bit larger. Did so again in only 29 years here. The field is fading, and if it's news to you, you've got some homework to do because that failure is becoming impossible to ignore. As our poles were clocked at 40 miles a year, or 575 feet per day, or at least it was two years ago. Directly beneath this video is a box with a link to a longer explanatory video about the solar connection and evidence of this shift occurring outside the Earth. Three most important quakes yesterday weren't the biggest. A four-pointer in the North Atlantic, the west coast of Canada took a shake, and another where the spreading rifts connect the Pacific Fault to the South American subduction zone. Earth's footprint and all ten magnetic connections are huddled together here, away from all active regions. Speaking of active regions, the splitting has begun to resemble a bit of decay. Not counting out this active region yet, but at this moment there's no magnetic danger, and this alleged beast coming over the limb is much less menacing than I thought it would be. Dark coronal holes up north and south. Watches continue, but we don't mind the calm. You can use the links to find your weather if you want. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.